Dear students, in today's video, we are going to look at what is combustion analysis and how can we use combustion analysis to find out the empirical formula and consequently molecular formula of a compound. So let's dive into the video to see how combustion helps us analyze a compound. Let's look at the definition first. Combustion analysis is a chemical technique used to determine the elemental composition of a substance, typically an organic compound. It involves heating the substance in the presence of excess oxygen to completely oxidize it to carbon dioxide and water. The combustion products are then analyzed to determine the amounts of carbon, hydrogen and oxygen in the original substance. This is the experimental setup that is used for combustion analysis. The first chamber contains a pre wet organic compound. It is kept in this bowl shaped boat that is made up of an inert metal particularly platinum, copper oxide acts as an oxidizing agent so that the compound burns completely to produce carbon dioxide and water. As we all know, any organic compound that burns in the presence of oxygen ultimately gives us carbon dioxide and water. This chamber is actually a furnace where combustion takes place. First, this oxygen moves into the chamber and the compound that is kept there is burned completely electrically. Having been burnt, water and carbon dioxide are produced and this water moves into, into the next chamber where magnesium chlorate is kept. Magnesium chlorate absorbs the moisture. It must also be noted that magnesium chlorate is also weighed before the experiment so that we could determine the amount of the water absorbed. We can also use calcium chloride in place of magnesium chlorate for the water absorption as well. Carbon dioxide moves into this third chamber where 50% potassium hydroxide solution is kept. It must also be noted that potassium hydroxide 50% solution is pre wet as well so that the absorption of carbon dioxide later on can be calculated easily. All those excess gases are escaped through this pipe, particularly excess oxygen. Now we have easily calculated the amount of water and carbon dioxide. Let's see how we can determine the empirical and molecular formula of a compound through combustion analysis. Percentage of the carbon can be calculated through carbon dioxide using this simple expression. Weight of carbon dioxide divided by weight of organic compound multiply with 12 divided by 44 into 100. And similarly, percentage of hydrogen in the water can be calculated using this simple equation. And ultimately, oxygen can be calculated indirectly by subtracting the amount of carbon and hydrogen from the 100. Let's see a practical example. Combustion analysis of 0.003 gram aspirin produced 0.0066 gram of carbon dioxide and 0.012 gram of H2O calculate empirical formula. As we have already seen, this is the expression that can be used to de determine the percentage of carbon. The weight of the carbon dioxide that is produced in the combustion analysis is 0.0066 and the weight of aspirin that was originally burned 0.003. Percentage of carbon comes out to be 60%. And similarly, the percentage of hydrogen can be calculated by putting the data of water in weight of organic compound and this comes out to be 4.48 percent and now we can add these two numbers and subtract them from 100 and this will give us the percentage of oxygen that comes out to be 35.5 percent let's convert these percentages into number of moles which can be done pretty easily as we know moles of a carbon is equal to percentage of carbon divided by atomic mass of carbon the percentage of the carbon in the compound was 60%. Let's divide it by 12 and we would get this 4.99 moles of carbon. Similarly, moles of hydrogen can be calculated and this comes out to be 4.43 and uh, the moles of oxygen are 2.21. So the ratio between carbon, hydrogen and oxygen comes out to be this. As you can see, they are in fractions. Let's try to convert them into whole numbers. First, we will take the smallest of the three and divide the rest of them with this smallest number. As you can see, this comes out to be 2.25, 2 and 1. Again, we can see there exists a fraction in case of carbon. If you look closely, we can use another number that is 4 to convert this fraction into a whole number. Let's multiply these numbers with 4 and there you go, 9, 8 and 4. So we have converted these moles into simple ratio. And there you go, C9H8O8 is actually the empirical formula of aspirin. It must be noted that this is also the molecular formula of aspirin. Let's see how we can calculate 
the molecular formula of any other compound using combustion analysis. Empirical formula for compound is CH2O and its molecular weight is 180, find its molecular formula. There exists a simple relationship between molecular weight and N. Molecular weight divided by empirical formula weight. As we already know, we have been given molecular weight 180. Empirical formula weight can be calculated using empirical formula. So this N, that is actually the ratio between molecular weight and empirical formula weight comes out to be 6. Now this N can be multiply with empirical formula to calculate molecular formula. Since we already know empirical formula that is CH2O, we can multiply it with 6, that is this N number, and there you go. Molecular formula is C6H12O6. Now you might be wondering, how could have we calculated this molecular weight? Let me tell you, there are many methods through which we can calculate the molecular weight of a compound like depression of freezing point, elevation of boiling point, etc. Let's look at the disadvantages of combustion analysis. You might be wondering why I am discussing disadvantages of combustion analysis. Although this method is still in practice in many industries, but we have got many advanced techniques like spectroscopic techniques that helps us calculate the molecular formula or empirical formula or molecular weight of a compound within minutes. First disadvantage is destruction of a sample. Combustion analysis involves heating the sample to a high temperature in the presence of oxygen, which means that the sample is destroyed in the process. Second disadvantage is incomplete combustion. Although the combustion process is designed to completely oxidize the sample, it is sometimes difficult to achieve complete combustion, which can lead to inaccurate results. It is a time-consuming process. Only limited compounds can be analyzed. It can be applied to compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen and especially those that can burn to give carbon dioxide and H2O. So the main disadvantage is it can be applied to only limited compounds that contain carbon, hydrogen and oxygen only. I hope you have found this tutorial useful. Please give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends and thanks for watching.